Conrad, you realize that the airplane that you're sitting in is older than you are. I do. And and this is an ultralight. Yes, sir. And when I first got started in it, believe it or not, I was probably about your age. <laughs> and Dale and I, uh, we actually flew. I had one of these with four engines on it. Uh, Phil White, another gentleman down in RA had them. So quite familiar with the airplane. How did you get involved with the laser? Well, Dale and I both share a love of soaring. And uh, Dale came down to Uvalde, Texas, where I live one year. And uh, we started talking and kind of hit it off. I, I knew about the laser, never flown one. But uh, he told me that he, he was the one that designed it. So, of course, we got to talking quite a bit. Uh, I've done radio control airplanes all my life. And uh, at the time I met Dale, I was working on very large electric engines, the biggest you could buy for radio control airplanes. And I had one sitting on my table, and he had been eyeing it on the internet for a while. So uh, over the next few months, we got together and we started testing that engine, trying to convert it uh, for use on the laser. So we tested that engine for a while. We got uh, about 60, 70 pounds of thrust out of it, and then ta Dale took it back home, uh, rewound it, did a whole lot of work to it, and got a, a bit more power out of it. But uh, in the end, we, we eventually found these Joby JM1s that provide a lot better power and uh, run a lot cooler than the original ones did. But that's only half of the problem. The other half of the problem is that you've got to have a, a power source. How did you uh, get to the battery technology in order to run them? Well, originally, for the batteries, we, uh, we used quite a few radio control airplane batteries. They were, they were small 5,000 milliamp pouches, and we used uh, hundreds of them to power the original laser. Um, these were a little bit harder because there were so many, we had to manage so many cells. And uh, what we eventually came up with was a larger 25 amp hour pouch uh, that we're using now. And it's a, a new type of battery, a, a lithium nickel manganese cobalt. And we've got 12 cells per battery, four batteries in the wing. So it's a lot easier to manage, a few less cells. Now, a charging system wise, is there a system available to charge them fairly quickly? Yeah, the original system uh, was tough because of all the all the different batteries, but now we've got it down to a pretty simple system. Uh, we've got two two uh, chargers that are dumb chargers. They don't they don't uh, manage the power any. They send straight power into the, the BMS system, the battery management system, and then that distributes power to the cells to charge them. And we're able to charge it uh, on 420 uh, amp circuits in a regular home in about an hour to an hour and a half. Now, it looks like you've extended the life of the battery as far as flying, too. I measured the time yesterday. You were up for over two hours. I was up for, for quite a bit yesterday, about, I think my timer said about 50 minutes. I, I went through quite a bit of the ultralight and the, the powered paragliding flight periods. But uh, these batteries now, there's, there's six positions in the wings for batteries, three per side. We can fly with two batteries, one per engine, and go for about 45 minutes, or we can have two per side and go for about uh, an hour and 20 minutes, or we can go three per side and go for over two hours. So there's there's quite a bit of endurance on these, and the, the new cells we're using have a, a lot longer lifespan. You can, you can charge them up and run them down over a thousand times, whereas the old lithiums, you can only do hundreds of times. And one of the other things I noticed that, of course, I was flying with four engines and pretty draggy. You were shutting this old girl off and she was staying up there all by herself for quite a yeah. time. Yeah, it's still pretty light with the with the battery systems and it actually has a little bit more power than the, the gas engines originally did. You can easily fly with one motor off and uh, it glides very nice without the motors. We've got engine braking systems that will stop the propellers so that you don't incur any more uh, induced drag from spinning propellers. So you can you can shut them off and glide around fairly easily. Now, performance-wise, compared to say the nine and a half hour Rotax that were originally on these, what kind of performance uh, do you think you're getting? The uh, the electric engines have a lot quicker response. There's no more uh, having to jump out and start the engines. Uh, you just plug them in, turn the keys, and they're ready to go. You pull up on power. They're a very smooth start and uh, very quick to power. If you push the power all the way forward, they're at full power within a half a second. So it's a, it's a pretty rough acceleration in the beginning if you want it to, but the throttles are, are bit, built in a way that it's a very smooth transition through power. 
And what kind of climb rates are you getting now? We don't have the numbers on it yet, but uh, with me in it, I'm about 160 pounds. Dale's about uh, 220. Uh, with me in it, it does about a 30 degree angle climb, and it's a pretty exhilarating climb in this little guy. And cruise, I was generally cruising the 45, 50 mile an hour range. Yep. It's about the same cruise. It may have gained a little bit, but uh, just because it's a bit cleaner. We don't have a fuel tank back there anymore, and we've got a little bit cleaner in the cells. So it may have increased a bit, but uh, it should be about the same. Now, are you looking at bringing this airplane back out into the market? Yep, Dale and I have talked about it, and uh, I think initially we're going to come out with a power system available for the original lasers to convert them. Uh, we think there's still quite a few lasers out there and quite a few owners that want to want to have fun like we are and uh, eventually I think we will start going into production on the laser again. Now if you were looking at a retrofit system for this now for example if I were to sell somebody a Rotax uh, nine and a half horsepower engine I would be looking probably in the forty five hundred dollar range then they would have to do the modifications to fit it back into the motor mount. What kind of money do you think that you're looking at for this system? This system is going to be a little more costly than the original gas engines but You've got to think about you're buying prepaid fuel. Uh, these these batteries have thousands of cycles, so that's equal to thousands of hours. So over a thousand hours, it, you save a whole lot of money in that it only takes one dollar of electricity to charge the thing. So if I was a laser owner and I wanted to retrofit something like this to my airplane, am I going to have to do major modifications to the airframe to accept them? No, it's a it's a very easy conversion. This laser is uh, 28 years old. It was built at the end of the assembly line that Dale set up before the, the company was pulled down. But uh, it sat in the barn for quite a while and we pulled it out and we retrofitted the system in less than two days. It's, uh, it's all, C uh, all computer built and CNC uh, cut parts. So the mounts fit on an existing spar. You just cut out the tedlar in the area where the batteries go and you mount six mounts to the D-cell structure of the spar and then uh, you put a, a bit of framework around it and a door and uh, that's about it for the batteries. The engines are bolt-on, bolt-off, so you take off your old gas engines and uh, just replace the two bolts that hold it on and your engines are on and then a small instrument panel and a throttle quadrant. The throttle quadrant goes into the original holes and the instrument panel just clips onto the main tube. And this airplane with all of that would still be a legal upright in the U.S.? Yep, yeah it weighs about 350 pounds with batteries in it and uh, uh, it's a pretty light airframe to begin with. And the batteries weigh about 110 pounds all up weight. So if somebody wanted to get a little more information, get in contact you, what's the easiest way to do that? Yeah, you can check out uh, www.elazair.com. We uh, don't currently have a site up, but I'll be working on that as soon as I get home. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Capacity batteries. You would have taken off back there. 